check 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 one two it is february 3rd 2023 and this is tutorial for drawing stuff i'm going to be drawing on the chart using a variety of different drawing tools so let's go ahead and get started we've got our template here basically just a function being hooked into the Sierra chart application that we're going to add code to and we're going to be able to draw stuff so first thing we need to do is declare the drawing object and uh, it's a use tool uh, type uh, and we'll call the variable uh, draw and we're going to go ahead and set the line style of the drawing to a solid line. The other options all start with line style underscore and they include like dot dash uh, and there's a couple others you should check the Sierra oops Sierra chart documentation uh, for the full list and that goes for the all these settings actually. Um, next thing we're going to tell this tool to do is uh, draw a line. So draw dot drawing type is equal to drawing vertical line. What we're going to make is a vertical line. You also have stuff like uh, drawing. Oh, by the way, all these are starting with drawing underscore and there's like a line uh, vertical line there's uh, rectangle I think there's a uh, highlighted rectangle that has like a you know filled in uh, translucent background there are a bunch of them uh, check the check the docs check the documentation um, next thing we're gonna declare is the line width and we're going to set it at 1. It's going to be a thin line. If we set it to 10, it'll be a thicker line. We're going to set it to 1. And then we're going to go ahead and need to set the x-axis, which is time, value of when it starts or when that when that line is to be drawn. So the way to declare that is actually with a begin date time or a begin index. So there's a couple different ways you can do this, mainly two. You can pass this tool a time object, an SC date time object to be specific which it will interpret and find where that exists on the chart and what bar index that exists at and it will draw the line there or you can provide the bar index itself if you don't know or care to have the time you can just say I want it right there on this bar index okay so in fact, you could make it be something like always in the middle splitting the screen in half with something like this by saying sc. Dot, oh gosh, what is the function name? I think it's like um, index of first visible bar. And if you wanted to put it right in the middle, you could just say sc. Dot, index of last visible bar minus uh, index of first visible bar. And then add sc.index of first visible bar plus. So take the index of the first visible bar and then add um, the difference between the last and the first, which would be half of the, of the way, and then go ahead. We have to divide by two in order to get halfway there. Important addition there so uh, that would provide us the bar index that's square in the, that's right in the middle 
So we'll we'll draw that there. And let's see, what else? Um, need to be terminating that line with a semicolon in order for it to be syntactically correct. Um, likewise, if we wanted to do that with a date, we could have used a date. You do not need to do both. <clears throat> do not need to do both. There is this thing called uh, chart number, and by thing, it's a property. You can actually force this drawing to happen on a different chart number. So if you programmatically have a different chart number or you want to like hard code it to chart number two, um, or you have a user who maybe hasn't, you have an input for, you know, select a chart and you can have the user select a chart in the settings of the study. And that's what you, that's where you want to target it. Um, it actually defaults to whatever the chart the study is running on, this study itself. So I don't need to change that or even set it because it's defaulted to that. Um, and let's see, I think the only other thing we need to do is have what uh, is called an, a method of adding, an add method. And what this tells Sierra is how to actually render the, the drawing onto the chart with respect to the code being run on every tick. So during live market hours, do you actually want to keep drawing that drawing over and over and over and over and over and over? Probably not. Um, so the add method controls the frequency of occurrence of the drawing and the behavior surrounding that due to the fact that this script is going to be running on every tick. So uh, the one that I use the most is uh, uh, it's an enum called utam add or adjust. And again, this is, I don't even know what the others are uh, off the top of my head. Uh, go look at the documentation on the Sierra website uh, for other add types because you can have it um, also add a new one each time. So even though it runs on each tick, it's adding a, <laughs> a fresh line. If you choose to do that, you can. Um, but I don't want to do that. So, and then the final thing that we need to add here is going to be the actual, uh, draw it. So up until this point, we've declared the drawing object. We've set the line style. We went ahead and set the drawing type, gave it a width. We gave it a start, uh, place since it's a vertical line. It doesn't need a Y axis coordinate because it's going to be on every single, uh, coordinate, basically every single value on the y-axis will have this line drawn on it. And then our add method. So the final thing we need to go ahead and do is just say sc.useTool. And then we pass in the drawing object we declared and we called it draw. So this last line right here actually tells sc to draw the draw the thing. Okay. So let's go ahead and compile this. We're going to go ahead and open up tutorial four, hit build, remote build. We're going to see that succeed. And then we're going to go add that study. So that succeeded. Going to go to analysis studies, add custom study. Going to go to tutorial four, draw stuff and hit add. We have no inputs. Um, and we are going to run this and there's absolutely nothing happening. So I must be missing something. Hmm. Let's see here. You know, what we didn't provide was a color. Let's go ahead and add a color draw dot color and let's make it, um, let's make it green. Uh, so color green is an enum we can use. And then we can go ahead and run our remote compiler once more. And I actually want to change this to be on chart region one. And there we go. We have a line that's drawn down the middle. Um, and if we were getting ticks coming into this market, this line would be moving over, but since we're not, it's static. There are no, there's no data coming in right now. So this is not recalculating on every tick. It's actually fixed 
over there. So if we wanted to, for example, draw this at 315 AM, which is what this says down here, uh, when I put my crosshair on it, we could use SC uh, begin begin date time and use an SC date time object instead of using the uh, index attributes of this to, to place the drawing. But if we come over here and then I can on my keyboard hit control uh, insert, control insert will recalculate the studies that are shown here. You can see um, it draws, as you hear me pressing that key combination in the background, I'm simulating incoming ticks by doing this. Um, and it will go ahead and draw that all over the place. Okay. So that is how we draw a vertical line. Now, what if we want to make it a horizontal line? Um, we can, we can, and all we actually need to do is, so this one's going to be vertical, right? Vertical line and we drew it. And now we're going to say horizontal line and we can actually reuse this drawing object because it, yes, it has drawn, uh, using this and has been basically passed to Sierra chart and rendered on the screen. And now this drawing object is still in scope in memory, but it is set to these values. So if we were to do this one more time, it would draw another exact line over. But what we can do is actually say, um, draw dot clear. Actually, I, I can't remember if it is a, I think it is a capital C draw dot clear. That'll clear out all the values. Um, or we can reuse it like this. We can just say draw dot drawing type equals drawing line. And then we can leave line width from up here there and line style there as well. But let's go ahead and change color. Let me copy color over here and we'll make the uh, horizontal line will make it a different color. Let's make it, uh, let's make it yellow color yellow. Okay. And then what we're going to do is provide not a beginner in a begin index or a begin date time. We're actually going to provide a begin value. So we're going to say draw dot begin value. And we're going to have to put in either a price or some kind of calculation that will provide a Y value. Um, you know, we could do is use the high of day. Let's use that. Um, that would be what a C dot today's high. I actually don't remember. Let me Google it here. Google. Uh-huh. Axel. Uh, high of day. Historical intraday. Just looking on the other screen here. Okay, there's a there's a function. Get OHLC for date. So we could call we could call that. Um, another idea is what if we made it like a crosshair right in the middle, basically like, like this crosshair. You could do something like that by reading the uh, top and bottom values of the chart. Um, I forgot what the function name of this is, so I have to go look for it uh, in, the, in the docs here. Let's just do something simpler, uh, so I'm not s searching for this while uh, looking through the docs. Uh, let's go ahead and s set it to, oh gosh, 4208. Or actually, you know what we could do? To, uh, we could just set it to the low of whatever 
of whatever the last bar is, or the cl let's do it to the close of whatever the last bar is. Uh, so that'd be index of last visible bar. So the value of that will be at the price of the close of the last visible bar. And so here it would be here, and then here it would be down here, and down here, if that was the last visible bar. And then let's go ahead and keep the method like that. I think we're ready to use it. So let's go ahead and draw it again and see what that does for us. Will we get that yellow line at the close of the last visible bar? Now that's interesting. Wow. Very interesting. I wonder if it's because begin index is still specified. So let's go ahead, and this kind of wonky stuff can happen. Let's go ahead and call that clear function that we were planning on doing. And let's go ahead and put that line style in to line style uh, dot. And we'll put line width in as well. And the method, add method, we'll put down there. Let's see how that turns out. We should get this one with the vertical and this one with the horizontal. Compiled. Let's go ahead. And we just get the green. Interesting. Interesting. And we don't get the yellow. Line style. Drawing type. Line width. Line width we have there. Color. Add method. Begin value. Let's go ahead and put a, an end value as well. Oh, I know why. Because drawing line needs an end value. It's drawing horizontal line that doesn't need an end value. I'm using the wrong drawing object, uh, the wrong drawing type. A line has a start and an end. A horizontal line goes forever. like that. So you see the difference? If we use a drawing line, we need to specify a begin and end value. If we use horizontal line, it just goes all the way across. So you can do a lot of different stuff. Um, and as I, this is kind of interesting, it's uh, grabbing the close of each of the f last bars close and drawing the horizontal line uh, wherever that was of the index of the last visible bar. So um, that's how we do that. And let's see what else I had on my list. Um, oh, of course. So you can also do uh, markers. And markers would be like, um, let's go ahead and draw a marker. And instead of a line style, it's going to be a drawing marker. And instead of a drawing horizontal line, it's going to be a marker of type. And then there's all sorts of, there's arrows. There are crosses, there's um, probably stars. You got to look up in the documentation. You can do triangles. Like you can do triangle right in white. Make it, we can make it bigger, make it a two. And let's put it on, uh, let's put it on the cross section uh, between the uh, The, the these two let's put a let's put a 
let's put a, a triangle there. And so we'll save that. Come down here. Remote build. Error. Cannot convert line style drawing marker. Ah, you know why? Because markers don't have drawing types. They have marker types. So I was using the wrong property on the drawing object there. Let's go ahead and remote build again. Oh, I still got one here. Uh, this is on line 47, line style. And this should be drawing type. Not, yeah, this should be drawing type. Uh, but which is what this is a drawing type enum. And this is not uh, the correct property to accept that. OK. I somehow have managed a successful build. Let's go ahead and rerun this. And there is our, there is our triangle pointing to the right, which will um, be placed wherever that line is. So if I if I redo this, it goes down there. Now, like I said, there's uh, a lot of different markers uh, that you can use. I'm trying to find the list of them in the documentation. Yeah, here we go. Uh, in the docs, you can see markers like uh, you can draw a point, marker point. Let's make this uh, let's make this a nine in line width. So if I'm gonna go ahead and compile this with a point instead, and we will see that it added a point. Um, you can use a plus, you can draw a star, a square, um, arrows, diamonds, all sorts of stuff. Um, so it's uh, a lot of fun you can have with that. Okay, next and finally, because this is getting long in the tooth, um, we can do text. And text is going to be very similar. Um, we're going to go ahead and draw some text. We're going to clear this. Drawing type, I believe it's drawing text. Let me double check that. Drawing text, it is. Um, so instead of, so it is a drawing type, and we want drawing text. We don't have a marker type. We can just remove that. We can make the color whatever we can. Let's make it blue. Um, instead of line width, we don't have line width because it's not a line. We have draw dot font size. Uh, let's set it to let's set it to 14 pixels, 14 size 14 font. Um, we do need to tell it where to go, so um, we can put it right at the center uh, as well, or we can offset it a little bit. Like let's say. Um, we can declare an integer offset and let's set it to, I don't know, 50. So um, you could just add offset um, to there and it'll move it over. Uh, since this is an index, I don't want to add 50 to the uh, bars because that'll fly off the end of the screen. Um, and then finally, the last thing that needs to be added is the actual text. Now, the text is stored in an SC string object called text on the drawing uh, object. And so if you want, you can also pass in an SC string object to it. Or if you want to just format the one that is there, you can just say format and then say um, this is the center. I don't know, but you can you can throw variables in here as well. Like if you wanted, you can say where uh, let's say we're at 
sc.begin index will be that, and then sc or draw dot begin value will be that, and this is meant to be draw. So it'll put the center there on that one. So let's go ahead and build this. Built, let's go ahead and hit re recalc by hitting control insert, and there is the text. So um, the text is saying center, and then it's two integers that we are substituting in where these percent d's are that's a feature of the format function which is an sc string method you can go look at the docs on how that works um, but it lets you pass in variables into strings for drawing or debugging or a bunch of other reasons but you can see that the first is the bar a in, bar index which is at 102 and that the begin value is actually a price not a uh, not a, an integer, so I actually can't spit it out with a percent %d. I need to use a percent %f because this is a is a float, not a, uh, an integer. Um, likewise, you can see it did get colored blue. It does have this font size. And then the offset there, maybe that was a bit much. Let's reduce that to 10 just so that you can see it come down and react to that. Um, we can also remove the word center. That's kind of... Uh, unnecessary. Um, also, let's just showcase a different marker type. We were on marker square. Let's do marker plus this time. And then uh, let's go ahead and build. We're at 27 minutes, so I'm going to wrap it up after this. And so we saw we adjusted the offset to 10, so plus 10 uh, on the um, y-axis here and then now you can see we are actually getting the full value of the y-axis value price value here and then as we move this again if there were ticks coming in uh, this would be happening automatically but if I recalculate it as it's going um, you can see it is moving along recalculating as it goes Oh, that is the last that is the last bar on here that's why it's not moving up anymore you see that the last visible bar the close of the last visible bar is where this y-axis value is stuck um, so so that is um, that is what we have here uh, that's how we drew a vertical line horizontal line some markers and then text um, there's also other types of text. You can draw static text, which will just sit in one spot. Um, you can do a lot of stuff with the drawing tools. So go read some uh, documentation on the Sierra chart website, and um, you can draw whatever you want. Hope that helped.